Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. In this one, we are going to be handling placing things in the world from your inventory. So I have currently set up just a very simple inventory over here. It's uh, four slots, nothing special. I can click one and then add an item and that's simple tooltip. So this is a cup and let's say I want to place it up there. I can just drag it out and there's my cup. And I can do that anywhere I want. Uh, as you can see, I'm currently tracing a fuck ton, but you can adjust this to your liking later on. So let's uh, not waste any time and let's just get straight to it. So let's just get started. The very first thing that we need is a HUD. So let's just set that up. I'm using a fresh project because I uh, am bored of the other project. So I'm using a fresh project, but you can easily just modify this to your liking. I'm going to be adding a inventory slot into our HUD. And then I'm just going to open that right away. Dock that up top. Uh, I'm also not adding a functional, like a fully functional inventory. So I'm just going to be adding a very simple wrap box. So I, so I have a visual, basically. That's pre pretty much all I'm going to add. I'm going to be adding an image to this uh, item icon. It's going to be variable and that's it for our slot. No, nope, I'm lying. We need a master item and then the variable of master item class reference. Now what we're going to do is we are going to, we need to set up something for our master item. So we need a blueprint structure inside of this one. We're going to have item info. So in my info, we're going to have a couple variables. We're going to have the name, which is going to be a text, and then maybe a can be placed variable, you know, to check if it can be placed or not. Save that. Back to your master item, we need to tile this, and then also add it. So item info, item info. Compile that. Now we're going to set up the HUD and such in our third person character. So head over to that. We'll do a begin play and we'll do a create widget. The HUD wants our, our reference as well. So we're going to set that up while we do this. TTDUF, third person character, expose that and editable. Compile and save back to our third person. Select your HUD, do a self out of the TTP ref, add that to the viewport. Like so. Now we have our HUD there. Our HUD doesn't actually contain anything. So let us just set up a very simple canvas panel and then a wrap box. This wrap box is um, not going to do anything with it really. I'm going to place it in the, the bottom right corner there only. And then I'm going to be adding our inventory slots to it. And I'm also going to add a padding to the right uh, to the on the X uh, by 50. I'm just going to duplicate these slots and that's our inventory slots. Now let us work a little bit uh, by I'm um, just going to show a little th thing first because there is a problem with this. Okay. The problem is that if I do a left mouse button and if I just wanted to find my location in the world space by doing a raycast, I could do a very simple get player controller. And out from the player controller, I could convert that mouse location to world space. And then the same as we do all our, our, our raycasts, we could just plug that in there. We could multiply this by a number. We're going to do a large number because this is going to come from our uh, controller. So I'm going to do like 2000. And then we add these two together. Our location and our direction, and that's going to be our end. If I now draw a debug on that and compile and save, hit play, now we are able to. And also, let me just do one more thing before I forget. Actually, I have already forgotten. So, get the player controller, set the input mode to game and UI, set show mouse cursor to true. When I hit play, now you can see that we are able to. Uh, do this. However, this doesn't work when we're using a widget because the widget don't uh, ha have the information from our player controller when we're dragging and dropping. So we need to do something different for that. 
this will not work for that. So we need to figure out a way to do that. Let's uh, go to our slot first of all, though. Uh, actually, let's uh, let's go to our master item. Right click that, create new blueprint. I'm going to call this one uh, placeable. And then cup. And then I'm going into the Quixel content to get a cup that I have uh, on another project. So it should be downloaded. There we go. Got a cup over there. I can just get that out. As always, with our mega scans, we need to set up the collision. So I'm going to use complex collisions as default, as simple. Now let's head over into our, uh, as we were doing in our placeable cup, uh, and also in our. You could do this as a master, this placeable cup, but I'm going to do it in the master item. You don't have to do it in the master item if you don't want to. I'm going to add the mesh there, and I'm going to add the cup in there. That is a lie. I'm not going to be adding the cup in there. This is going to be blank. And I'm adding the cup in our cup, of course. So now I can do a cup there. That is our cup. It should have some intel. So this is going to be a cup. It's going to be a cup on the static mesh. It can be placed. And I don't have any icons for a cup. So this is our cup. I'm also going to set up a very simple tooltip, a tooltip widget. It's going to be very simple. All it's going to have is a border with a text inside of it. The side on screen on that. The text is going to be the item name. Now, when we go to our inventory slot and then we override our on mouse enter, we could do a check to see if our item is a valid class. If our item is a valid class, then we're going to create widget. Widget is going to be our new one, which is going to be tooltip. And also, uh, and after that, we can get the item name text. Text from that. Get our item. Get our defaults. Break that open. And that is our name. Once that is done, you can go out from the return and set tooltip. Didn't work. Move the widget down there. The tooltip, the target is ourselves. If I compile and save that. Nothing's going to work because we don't have added the item. So I'm just going to set up a very simple keyboard one. And we also need the HUD ref. Like so, and then add it back to the viewport. In our HUD ref, I'm going to get our inventory slots. That is uh, not how you do that. Get your inventory slots. I'm going to use the first one. I'm going to set the item to be our cup. Is just to simulate that I have a cup. And after this is done, I have to update the slot. So I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to remove that. Create a new event, sorry. Update slot. Check if the item is valid. Which it will be, but better safe than sorry. Grab the defaults. Grab the icon. Set brush. Go to texture. Texture coming from our item info, like so. If this is not valid, set it to blank. Right? And then we call it. Update slot. If I play now, now we got our item and it's a cup. Right? Can't actually do anything with it, so let's handle that. Over on our inventory slot, I'm going to override on preview mouse down, out of mouse event, detect drag, if pressed. Drag key is going to be left mouse button. We need a new blueprint class, which is going to be a drag drop operation. I'm going to call this one inventory drag drop. Inside of our inventory drag drop, now we need our item, type master item, which is going to be, I'm going to use, edit that. Back in our inventory slot, uh, we're going to override on drag detected. And then we're also going to do a little um, show and tell, basically. So over on drag detected, what we're going to do is we're going to get if the item is valid because we don't want to drag a, a empty, empty slot. So only if the item is valid, then we're going to, uh, we need a drag visual as well. So drag visual inside of drag visual, we're going to have, have a, uh, image. It's going to be the side on screen. It's going to be called dragged item icon. 
on the brush, I'm going to set it to 64 by 64, just so it's a little bit bigger. And it's the same size as, the, as our inventory slot. Back on our inventory slot, now we can create the widget. And the widget is our drag visual. A drag visual, uh, from uh, here we're going to create drag drop. Class is going to be our inventory drag drop. The visual is the visual. The payload is ourselves. The item is our item. Pivot is going to be mouse down. And then we're going to, uh, out from the return order for drag visual, get the dragged item icon. Set that brush from the texture. The texture comes from our item. Also, this return goes into there, just so we don't forget. Get the item, get the defaults, break that open. And there we go, we got our icon. That's our on drag detected. Now we need our on drop. We're gonna use that over in our HUD. So over on our HUD, uh, we're gonna override on drop. Uh, before we do that, we need to go back to our canvas panel, make sure that the canvas panel is visible. So that if I do a print string here, it's gonna, uh, haven't actually set up the drag. Uh, that's awkward. We have set up the drag. We just haven't set up the, uh, ooh, 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 haven't I plugged that, haven't I plugged you in? Yeah, there we go. So now it's uh, calling out hello. Uh, however, you would think that if you go to the on drop and we just remake what we have down here, you know, and let's just do a test from this and see if, uh, if this works. So if I drop it on the canvas panel, theoretically, if this works, it should go to the place that we are clicking, right? Because it's, this is when we're clicking it. Doesn't happen. And even though that screen position, if I, if I, if I print that out, the screen position is going to say that it's okay, right? It's finding the right screen positions. Uh, however, it's not able to calculate the world space. So if I, if I go back to where we were before, and then I do a print string on our out hit, and where we hit it, so the location where we hit it, and then I hit play, it's printing out zero, zero. It's not able to calculate it with the same method as we have here, which is kind of weird. So we need to bypass that somehow. We're gonna head over into our inventory slot, first of all. Over here, we're gonna make a new reference. So it's gonna be called uh, PC ref, player controller. And then we're also gonna make a new function. This function, we're gonna call drag, uh, on drag. Uh, yeah, on drag, something like that. This one will have a input of type uh, vector 2D. I'm gonna call that screen position. Over on our on drag detected, we're gonna refresh this one. Mm, can't you refresh that one yet? Hang on, haven't I set that up? Player controller, expose that, head back into your inventory slot, refresh that, remove this PC ref, you don't need that. Out from this one, get player controller. So we got our on preview down, which is done. We got our on drag detected, which is done. Now we need to head over into inventory drag drop. Inside of inventory drag drop, we're gonna override dragged on our functions. Here, out from the pointer event, we're gonna get screen space position. We're gonna do it absolutely local, out from that. The geometry comes from our PC ref. Now we're using our player controller, right? We're able to access the information. So we're getting the screen space widget geometry. As you can see here, it gets the geometry of the widget, holding all widget added to the player screen. You can use this geometry to convert between absolute and local space of widgets. After this, we are going to get our payload, get our payload, and then cast that to our WBT inventory slot. Out from this one, we need a new function. Uh, actually, we have made that function, we just haven't made it yet. So on drag, and then the screen position is the new calculation from here. The geometry is the return node of the screen space geometry. Head into your on drag. And on drag, we're going to do some calculations. We're going to get our player controller. We're going to get player screen space widget geometry. Out from the return node, we're going to do local to viewport. The screen position is a local coordinate. 
the pixel position is going to be a D project screen to world. D player is our player controller. And now we can do our normal line trace, right? So now we can do our direction, multiply that, and then add these, the, the position and the multiplier together, convert that to a float. I'm going to do a ridiculous number like 10,000. This is where you will change basically the distance of where you can place things. I think that was a requirement in the comments as well. Uh, I've, uh, there's going to be line trace by channel. And this is where, because uh, that was also in the comments, a different channel. So now you would plug in your channels. In here, this is the start of it. And then we can get that. And then out from the out head, we're going to break that. So just promote the location. And then we are basically done in here and return after that like so now we need to go to our hud and we need to handle our on drop so our operation we can cast that to our inventory uh, cast that to inventory drag drop out from this we can get our payload and from the payload we can cast to our inventory slot then from our inventory slot we can get location and then we can spawn actor from class the actor is our cup the transform is uh, split that open and add the input the location is okay and we can return compile and save and hit play now might be some bugs honestly Ah, there we go. You can basically now place things wherever you want in in the world. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's uh, it's checking constantly when we are placing things. Uh, you can make a delay out of this. You can do whatever you want. But this is how you basically would place uh, place an item wherever you want in the world. If there's any questions, please let me know in the comments, and I will try my best to uh, answer as soon as I see it and hopefully this was uh, what you wanted on your on your request in the comments until next time i'll see you later bye bye